flow and stress are the two most central experiences that you will have an experience on a daily basis. We move in a pendulum between flow and stress almost every day. With flow being that experience of natural, effortless energy. Flow comes from inside. It is found, it is there, it's always there, it's always expressed, it's always there to take and to use whenever you want. Stress is externalized, it is something that you need to take on, it's something you need to lift, it's heavy, it tenses your muscles, it makes you stretch, it makes you focus, it makes you push, motivate, force yourself to do something. Flow is a voluntary energy. It comes from out of nowhere in any situation. It can just leak out in any conversation, in anything you do. You cannot just help yourself. You have to just do it. So when you type yourself, flow is one of the most central concepts because flow reveals your true identity, your natural self, your most effortless energy. What you do, what you cannot help yourself but do. You're constantly doing it. You, it's leaking out in every a aspect of your life. It's something free. It's a free energy that just, just is there and just represents you. And just represents you when you are relaxed and when you are happy and when you're in a good state of mind. When you're in stress, you're not yourself. You're not yourself when you're hungry. You're not yourself when you're stressed. When you're stressed, your worst qualities hit against you. Your insecurities, your worries, your concerns. That feeling inside yourself that I am not enough. The way I am, my natural energy, what I have to offer is not enough. I have to be more. I have to push myself. I have to train myself. I have to force myself. I have to strengthen myself to survive and to cope with life. So now when you're in stress, almost every experience is perceived as external. You're not doing it because you want to. You're doing it because you have to. There is a sense of urgency and must in every action that comes out of stress. So stress is very re revealing. Most of all, it reveals the opposite of us, what we are not. It reveals our repressed fears and anxieties and our all our small little insecurities. Stress is a reminder of that black hole that we leave behind us every day from everything we don't do, all the bills we don't pay, or all the friends we don't talk to, or all the things we forget or neglect or leave behind. All those things are reminders of the cognitive functions and the personality traits that are the furthest from ourselves. So when we take personality tests, per flow psychology should be the central concept we use to validate our own theories about ourselves. Whenever I say, oh, yeah, I love to do things with my body, or yeah, I like to lift things, and I like to be out and have adventures, what we have to do is really we have to go into these situations and test our theory. Test your theory about yourself. If you have a theory about who you are or who you are meant to be at your best, go out and test that theory. Am I a philosopher? Well, sit down, think, wonder, question everything and then see how that feels and see how that energy is experienced, how it's experienced in yourself. Does it come naturally for you? Or do you need outer motivators? Do you need other people to help reinforce this system inside of yourself? Do you need routines, papers, uh, information that will help you maintain and keep this mindset going? Do you need stress to push this through? Do you need to stress and force yourself to sit down in a room? <laughs> do you need to lock the door and have throw away the key to truly sit down and write that piece of paper that would make you a writer? Or does it come naturally? Do you just write all the time whenever you have a chance? Do you find yourself pulling towards a pen or looking for a notebook wherever you go? Is writing something that comes natural to you? Or is it something that is forced or stressed or pushed? So flow and stress. 
Those are two sides of the coin. The flow side represents all your dominant natural personality traits. Stress represents all your unnatural, all your anxious, all your worried personality traits. Everything you worry about not doing, everything you feel you should do, well, you know, the INTP worrying that they said something that might have upset somebody. The ENFJ that uh, worries that they missed something or said something stupid again. The ENTP that worries that maybe I've done too much, maybe I've jumped a little bit too far, maybe I've done something crazy and now people think I'm stupid. Marvel, can we see Marvel? Okay, stay there in the corner for a bit then. So, Flo has two siblings that are easily confused with Flo. The first is autopilot. Your autopilot is not who you are, you know. There are some natural habits that we tend to fall into just because they're easy. But they're not fun and they don't provide us with a positive feedback loop where we feel, yes, great, awesome, more, better, better. Instead, they... Leave us in this deadened state of mind where it's like, yeah, click, next, 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 next. Okay, I'm doing so much now. Oh, it's going great. Yeah, more, next, next. You know, autopilot is uh, has that voluntary trait in that it comes from itself. You know, we tell ourselves not to fall into an autopilot or not to fall into a routine or not to do something a certain way. But then we end up doing it anyways, you know, we cannot but help ourselves but do it. And uh, that's something that makes it appear like flow. But the lack of joy and enthusiasm in the activity, the lack of energy when you do it, the lack of motivation or care to do it right and to do it well, those are all signs it's not natural to you. It's not something you really genuinely enjoy to do. The other aspect to talk about is inspiration. You know, when other people are there and when you have the right stimulus and when you have the right rewards, then you there are some things that you will naturally find yourself doing. And often these things come from inspiration. You're inspired to do it because your environment supports this process in you. You cannot naturally just do it on yourself. There are certain cognitive functions that you would enjoy theoretically doing but cannot bring yourself to do unless you have help and support from other people. So what that means is that you need constant validation in everything you do. What do you think about this? Do you like this? Is this great? What do you guys think about that? You need rooms and environments that support you in doing it. People that say, hey, how is it going? How are you doing? How are you progressing? How is it? Ha what's happening now? Where are you at now? People that support you, systems, uh, mind maps, you know, ex external data that will help support you in what you're doing. So inspiration is something that you run out of, you know, where flow isn't just there, it's an energy that comes from inside itself that will never deplete on its own. Inspiration is an energy that is supplied from other people. You meet somebody and you get really inspired and they say they're writers and you go, oh, I want to be a writer too, or they're adventurous and they travel and you go, oh, I want to travel too, or they are really caring and generous people and you go, oh, I also want to help people. And the, the inspiration is something that is supplied from other people or our natural ability to be influenced by other people and to uh, mimic and take on the personality traits and energies of others around us. When we are around certain people, it can be easy to be very open because they are very open. But when we're not supplied by that energy, when other people are not opening up, we also close up behind ourselves. So yeah, when we're insp inspired, we may trick ourselves to having personality traits that we don't. I mean, there is a difference between enjoying the activity and loving it and finding it great. But if you're not able to supply it on your own, if that energy is quickly depleted on its own, if there's no external stimulus and you cannot keep it up, that's a sign that it's not your flow type, it's not who you are at your best or in a state of flow. 
So I said flow is natural and effortless, so why don't we always have it then? Why, how come we step into stress? How come we don't just uh, do our dominant personality traits all the time? Why don't we always just slip into it? How come sometimes our inferior functions or our stressors take over? The simple explanation here is stress is and feels very, very, very real. Stress feels very heavy. Stress feels very upsetting or it makes us anxious or it makes us feel ashamed of ourselves or it makes us feel upset or angry or it makes us feel fearful or afraid of ourselves or something. So stress is very real and it feels very heavy. It feels like a dark hole that is pulling at us or it feels like a potential threat and it pulls us and our base instinct to survive. Stress causes us to want to fit in even if we are born to stand out. Stress causes us to conform to the system even though our, we are individualists and we can't, we want nothing but to express ourselves. Stress forces us to do things that are necessary to survive and in this Stress can be and can drive us towards some really dark actions, manipulation and to projected insecurities and to hurting other people or into uh, acting cold or shutting other people out or disappearing or ghosting other people, you know, in our desire to run away from stress or to avoid stress or to avoid facing stress directly, we can find ourselves basically falling into the dark tri triads, you know, anything that has to do with manipulation, control, injury, harm, anything that can be directed either towards the self or towards other people. But stress is also something that can tell us to rise up, you know, and it can also be uh, an important grounding vehicle, you know, it can be something that tells you stop and think not just about yourself, but also about other people. Take the system into account as well. Not everyone can do this, not all the time. Not everyone can get away with this. Okay, stress can be a reminder, a signal of having hurt somebody or having upset somebody or genuinely done something you shouldn't have. And it can, in this, it can help you to back up your own actions to take a backup on everything you do and to take some kind of precaution so you don't jump too high and end up falling off the other side of the world. But it's not meant to hinder you or keep you from being yourself. Stress was never meant to be something that truly shut you down or kept you from truly living. In stress, we can be pulled towards actions and behaviors that will make us fundamentally depressed and unhappy and miserable. Stress was meant to be something that kept us alive, but it was not meant to keep us from living. So the important reminder and why I do my work is because I want to educate people on flow and happiness and natural behavior and to finding yourself and to finding your flow functions and finding ways to maintain them as often as you can in every situation possible. I hope this video helped you understand flow a little better. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.